Um, week, uh, just excited um, as we get uh, closer and closer to Friday. Uh, just looking forward to getting back with the guys. Had a good day off yesterday after a really good weekend of three inner squads. Had great weather last weekend and uh, battling the elements a little bit today. Uh, Going to be inside uh, today, but try to get a good quality practice in today. And, um, you know, hopefully the weather cooperate with us uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And, and uh, we'll do everything we can to get our team ready for Friday for, uh, for opening day. But uh, very excited. Um, guys are feeling good. Um, Health-wise, we're in a pretty good spot, and uh, guys are focused and uh, ready to go, and I think they're tired of playing each other, so uh, it's time to play somebody else. We're going to go with Brooks Crawford, uh, game one. Uh, we'll go with Davis Sharp in game two, and we will go with Justin Robleski in game three. So that will be our three starters uh, for the first weekend. Um, you know, I, I think like anybody uh, who has stripes on their sleeves, who has started and pitched in the bullpen, uh, you know, he wants to start. But I also think, uh, you know, Jacob is one of the best teammates uh, that you could ask for. And I think he, I think he understands that um, regardless of his role, that he's going to try to dominate his role. He's going to try to do the very best he can to help us win games. He's pitched out of the bullpen uh, and he started. Uh, for us, so he's done a number of things for us. So, uh, I mean, we certainly feel like Jacob Hennessy is going to pitch uh, first weekend. It's just a matter of when. Uh, but he'll be one of our first guys that we'll go to out of the bullpen. He throws strikes. He's got three pitches. Uh, he's got experience. So he's going to be a very valuable piece for us to try to win a series uh, this upcoming weekend. Very hard decision. Um, you know, we just felt like uh, more than anything else um, that uh, Sharp and Robleski, from a stuff standpoint, they have starter stuff. Uh, they have velocity. Uh, they have three pitches. Uh, and we'd like to give them that routine of being a starter uh, early in the season uh, so that we can map out their week and plan out their week as opposed to um, you know, giving him the call in the bullpen and, hey, get ready, you're, you're, you're coming in for the next hitter. Uh, we felt like more of a planned approach for those two guys would be beneficial to them. Um, and we also uh, feel like they're ready and, and feel like their stuff is, is certainly good enough to compete uh, as weekend starters. It's a huge test, and, but, uh, but one that I'm uh, pretty excited about. Um, so uh, it's a lot of baseball in a short amount of time. It's certainly going to test our starting pitching and our bullpen. We're going to have to we're going to have to use every weapon we have out of the pen uh, in the first two weeks. So we're going to get a chance to really see what guys are able to do uh, in an, in a competitive environment, uh, being able to play uh, eight games in in those first two weekends uh, from weekend to weekend. Uh, so uh, it's certainly going to test us, but we're also going to be tested on the position player side. Uh, we feel like we have uh, quality depth on the position player side as well, and we'll probably run out some different combinations because Davis Sharp is a two-way guy. So that's going to impact kind of what we do as far as when he pitches, when he's not pitching, how do we use him, uh, how do we use some of our platoon options, lefty and righty. So you know, we're, we, we don't have necessarily a set lineup. I would say either we're going to we're going to run a number of different guys out there just based on the matchup and also want to get some of those young guys in there and get them some experience to see how they do. I think he'll play first, um, but he could also play some third base. Again, it just depends on some different combinations as far as kind of what we want to do in the infield. But I think over the course of the year, he's going to play some first and he could play some third as well. I think Sam will play some third. You know, Sam could play some second. Sam could play some outfield. Uh, but uh, we've been working him primarily at third base, really just to try to get him as acclimated as we can to third base, along with getting Bird as acclimated as we can get him to first base. Those be your uh, well, I would say that as of right now, uh, that's what I would be leaning towards. I haven't written a starting lineup for this weekend yet. Uh, but um, you know we've been we've been doing an awful lot of work with those guys at third and first base. Here, maybe in, in left, in right, and center, and how do you see right shaking out? 
Uh, we've got, again, we've got a number of guys that I would say are in the mix in the outfield. Uh, you know, Michael Green's going to be in that mix, has been working a lot in right field. Teodosio uh, has been working primarily in center field. Uh, we've had Kier uh, in left field. Uh, we've had Elijah Henderson has played really well all year long in left field and in center field some. Uh, another guy that has really swung the bat very, very well is also a plus defender, could play really all three. Uh, but is a very good defender in left or in right is Bo Majkowski. He's played really well, too. Left-handed bat, very athletic, good defender. So all those guys are going to be in the mix for opening weekend. Have you been happy with what you've seen on the base pads as far as trying to change the philosophy a little bit in the last few weeks? We're certainly faster. You know, we certainly have uh, more guys uh, that can do different things on the base pass that can steal bases, can steal second, can steal third. Uh, we should be able to bunt for hits. Uh, with a number of different guys. So, yes, absolutely. I feel like this is the best base running club uh, that we've had uh, in my four years. But, you know, we got to do it against somebody else, too. So, uh, but we do have the ability uh, from an athleticism standpoint of being able to run a little bit more. He was 15 and two as a starter, so I think that's that that played a lot into it. And uh, you know, I'm pretty high on Sharp too, and and high on Robleski. Uh, but I think for us, you know, the, the, the biggest factor was just that that Brooks has pitched very very well uh, all year long, fall and spring in our squads. I think he's he's a more complete starter right now uh, than he has been in previous years. But he had a lot of success for us last year, and he's been a workhorse. He's been a guy that's been able to take the baseball every single week and give us quality starts. I think he's more ready to be able to go deeper into the game now uh, than he was in the past. And that's, you know, partly just based on how we've used him. You know, early in his career, uh, he was more of a long reliever uh, than we started him. So, you know, that probably played a little bit into. Uh, his ability to go super deep into a ball game. I think now that he had that full year last year being a starter, um, he's physically and mentally prepared to be able to go deeper into a ball game now, and that's why we decided to go with him in game one. Certain major league managers are, are not afraid to bring in a closer if it's a tight ball game in the seventh the eighth. Do you see Carson filling that role a little bit? Like, it doesn't have to be the ninth? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't believe in – I believe in using your closer or your best reliever in the highest leverage situations. I, I'm not a I, – I think there's certain guys that are, that are probably more suited to one inning at the end of a ball game. Uh, but I think you, you, have to be, you have to be aware of when is their leverage situation. And when you get into those last nine outs of the ball game, who's coming up? What's the score? You get runners on base and you got a one-run lead, you may want to bring in your best guy right then and there and see what happens. Um, I've also been a big believer in we don't worry about tomorrow. Uh, we're going to win today. You know, I think it's been very evident in what we've done even in the middle of the week. You know, we, we try to win every single game, and we put a huge emphasis on doing everything we can, regardless of the opponent, to win that game. So we'll use – you know, Carson Spires in every competitive moment that we need to use him if he's available, uh, whether that's on a Tuesday night, a Friday night, a Sunday. If he's available and feels good and he's ready to go, uh, you could see him in the seventh, the eighth, the ninth. Uh, we'd love to be able to keep him as a ninth inning guy because that means that the guys that are pitching before him are doing a great job. Uh, that we have options of right-handed and left-handed bullpen guys to bridge the gap to him. Uh, but if we feel like, you know what, he's the best guy that we've got on this staff when it comes to getting outs with inherited runners. He was the best reliever on our staff last year with inherited runners. So a big key in being a reliever is what can you do when you come into the game with runners on base. Uh, we always talk about trying to bring guys in uh, on a clean inning, but a true reliever can pitch with runners on base, and a pure hitter can hit with runners on base. So Carson can do that. So we're going to use him in high leverage situations. He just seems so laid back. Is that part of what makes him successful is that he just kind of has that chill factor? He does. I mean, he is a very laid back individual. Uh, but I also think he is about as competitive a young man um, as we have in this program. 
on that pitching staff, this is a guy, he felt like from day one that he belonged. Uh, even in his freshman year, we only pitched a handful of innings. We were considering redshirting him, you know, as a freshman because he transitioned from being a two-way player to a pitcher in that first year. And, you know, he, he never lost confidence in his ability of being able uh, to compete at this level. And you could even see it late in his freshman year when we did pitch him. And then last year, how good he was for us. So, uh, you know, he is. He's a laid-back guy, but when you give him the baseball, um, you know, he thinks he can beat the Red Sox. So he's, he's, he's very confident. Yeah, um, I think if you asked our guys uh, throughout the whole fall and preseason, um, from a preparation standpoint, I, I don't know if we could have challenged them any more. Uh, just with the way that we train our players, as, as hard as we work, um, I'm not sure if, if they could have done more. So they ought to feel really good going into our first weekend of playing somebody else that from a preparation standpoint, we've challenged them about as hard as we can. Uh, so, and, and whether that's opening weekend, a midweek game, ACC, we get 56 opportunities to play. We don't put a whole lot more emphasis on one than the other. So, you know, for me, you know, I just care about Friday. You know, we're going we're gonna to worry about game one when we get there. And, and I think what, whatever lineup we roll out there, uh, whatever relievers we bring in, they'll be ready.